Greetings and welcome to Lakeshore Church, a caring, growing, and serving church. Thank you for joining us for worship here on the first Sunday of October. We are celebrating communion later in the service, and I invite you to participate in that part of the service with us. In order to do so, you'll need to get your own elements of bread and cup ready. If you are visiting with us today, if you're just tuning in for, uh, for the first time, so glad to have you. Welcome. We're, we're glad to include you here. Uh, if you're a regular with us, uh, I'm glad you're a part of our community as well. I invite you to stay connected to us uh, uh, through uh, our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, through our uh, YouTube uh, content, subscribe uh, to our channel, and also by uh, downloading the Lakeshore Church app from the App Store. Uh, we're in the middle of a series. We're titled it The Good and Beautiful Community. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how the good and, good and beautiful community serves. So without any further ado, this morning's worship now begins. Let 
good morning, church. Once again, this morning, we have two scripture passages for our readings today, both of them from the New Testament. Hear now the word of the Lord. The first one comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verses 24 through 27. Also, a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be considered the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings and the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. Our second passage from, comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to share that verse from Philippians again. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. I remember this story that was told in my Christian ethics class. There was grave concern at this church over a new member and the risk that he posed to everyone else in the church community. Word had gotten out that this person was HIV positive. This was back in the early 80s when the virus was new. There was lots of misinformation out there about it, and it was known to be a death sentence. There were lots of people who were just uneasy with him at the church. They were worried about contracting AIDS. But the conflict reached a head over communion. This particular church had the practice of a shared cup. Now there is one cup. That is a spiritual reality. But this particular church symbolized that by having everyone drink right out of the same cup. People put their lips on it, and then the next person did, and the next person did. And, and of course, there, there was concern about this. The people were concerned that they were going to get HIV from celebrating communion. People started phoning in to the church's leadership. It was an organized effort, and the general consensus among the church was that this new member should be told that he could receive a wafer, but out of respect and concern for the rest of the church body, he should refrain from partaking in the cup. After all, even though there are two elements, the bread and the cup, our tradition states that as long as you are uh, taking one of the two elements, then you're still in full communion with both Christ and the church. They thought that this was a great compromise and, and that this would be best for everyone. Now, as the board came together, uh, many of the members were just uneasy. They, they, were, they were worried about, about what they had to decide. Uh, but as they shared the, uh, the, the news of all the phone calls they had all received, it seemed like the whole church was on the same page. So someone made a motion uh, that uh, you know, they do what, what I just described, that they invite this person just to, just to partake of the wafer for the, for the good of the, of the community. And they were about to take a vote when one of them said, you know, I've been praying about this for a long time here before coming to this meeting, and, and I'm uneasy about this, and I wonder if there aren't some other solutions, other things that we can think of. And they started brainstorming. What if we get a special cup just for him? What if we just move to individual cups? We all get our own. <laughs> what if we do the dipping of the wafer, wafer into the cup instead of drinking right from a cup? And somebody said, what if we just ask him to go last? That way none of us will have to worry about getting his germs. What do you say, doctor? 
See, one of the board members was an uh, infectious disease doctor. Uh, he was on the board of this church. Uh, he had been silent through this whole discussion. But after he was asked, <laughs> he was able to speak. And after he spoke, do you know what they decided to do? They decided that their new member with HIV should be served first. He was the one who was at most risk. He was the one with a compromised immune system. He was the one that they needed as a community to look out for. It wasn't the other way around. They didn't need to protect themselves from him. They needed to protect him from them. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Oh, you, you might imagine that the church uh, didn't really like that decision. It made a lot of people uneasy, and yeah, some people left because of it. The pressure the board members received after making that decision wasn't, wasn't easy to, to withstand. But, but they stood fast. And actually, it provided the opportunity to help educate all of their members more about AIDS and HIV. And, 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 and as their heart grew for those with HIV, as their understanding about the disease and, and, and how you contract the disease spread throughout the church, it ended up being that a lot of other people from the HIV community started coming to this church. They, they actually began intentionally ministering to this group. The kingdom of God was served. Our passage today from Philippians blows away a false narrative. It just blows it out of the water. The false narrative is that our own needs matter most. And we accept this narrative because we've been formed for it. Some of you know that before I studied Christian ethics, I studied economics. Our system of free market capitalism is based on this idea that, that the best outcomes for all of society happen when individuals look after their own self-interests. In 70, 1776, Adam Smith laid this out in his uh, book, The Wealth of Nations. And as he was writing about this theory, he talked about this invisible hand uh, which was a metaphor for, for the forces that work behind the scenes in the marketplace, uh, behind the scenes of individual self-interest to bring out the best outcome for all of society. The theory uh, teaches that, that not only is there nothing wrong with looking out for number one, but that doing so turns out to be the best for everyone. Society's trained us to look out for ourselves, to advocate for ourselves, to compete with others in the marketplace, and to compete with others in life. But this only results in the best outcome for everyone when everyone has equal capabilities and equal access to resources, knowledge, and ideas. That kind of assumption only happens in economic theory. It's, it never happens in the real world. In the real world, the result of, of a free market economy is, is that some rise to the top while others are wondering how they're going to get their next meal. That's why churches always and governments sometimes need to step in. We want to help those who need food. Uh, I think all uh, in society really have that heart. But if you look at, at what we honor at, at what we do, at what we lift up. You just have to look at those who are at the top. We know the names, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffett. Greatness in our society is defined by power and fame and success. It's defined by big bank accounts and fancy cars. We don't blame people looking out for number one, chasing after those things. But in the kingdom of God, the truth is that others' needs matter the most. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. Now, it's not that we have to forfeit our own needs. The, the passage doesn't say to forfeit your own needs. It says don't only look at your own interests. The invitation is is simply to, to take a moment to suspend our, our natural instinct, that natural instinct to look out for number one. Uh, suspend it long enough so that you can elevate others' interests above your own. 
That's how you can decide what to do, how to live, who to serve. And how does this get played out in the church? In the church, we want to look out for another's interests in the church above our own. That's someone with a traditional worship preference asking first, what is someone who prefers modern worship going to need here? Or it's vice versa, someone with modern worship preference asking what someone with a traditional worship preference might need in their worship. It's those who are in person asking, not just as an afterthought, oh, oh let's stream our service, but, but how can we best honor those who are joining us online? Uh, what can we do for them? It's those who may be leading one particular ministry in the church asking, not, you know, how can I round up the troops and, and make this ministry a success, but, but first asking, what can I do? What can I do to help others who are leading ministry? What can we do for that ministry? Now, now, I don't want you to misunderstand the verse. You know, Paul isn't opposed to individualism. He believes in people taking responsibility for themselves and, and bearing their own burdens. But he doesn't want individualism to cause you to distance yourself from another person's burdens. He doesn't want you to be aloof when it comes to the joy and sufferings of the community or to be cold in the way that we deal with those to whom we belong within the, our church. You know, oftentimes those kind of uh, attitudes happen just when you're worn out, when you're tired, when you've given and given and given and, and you find you have nothing left. It doesn't help the kingdom. It doesn't help you if you're burnt out, if you're cynical or if you're depressed. Even as we seek to put others before ourselves, we still need to be aware of our own needs. We can't sacrifice our own well-being for the needs of others. You're going to best care for others when you yourself are cared for. <laughs> We're reminded every time we board a plane, put on your own oxygen mask before assisting others. Uh, so we need to balance our own needs with the needs of others, and we should never feel guilty about doing that. Oh, it's easy to feel guilty when you come up against a real need and you see it and the person's asking for help and you don't have the capacity to help. You got to say no. Now, for those of you who are helpers out there who, who initial inclination is to, to come to others' aids and sometimes maybe at the cost to your, to your own well-being, the best defense against, uh, uh, against protecting yourself and also against feeling guilty about when you do uh, uh, look out for yourself, care for yourself. It's, it's to think intentionally up front about your priorities. You see, you decide in advance what kind of help you're able to give, what sort of request you're going to say yes to, and, and what just isn't going to fit within your priorities. It's always good to leave margin in your life because, yeah, uh, urgent needs do come up and you want to respond to people in need. You want to put their needs uh, ahead of your own. But, but but it's good to know in advance if, if that request is going to fit within your priorities when it does come up. You see, if you're not intentional up front and, and you end up saying yes to something of secondary importance just because it's presenting now and because it's urgent, saying yes now may mean that you have to say no to something more important later. We don't want to do that. See, one of the best ways to be a servant to others without burning yourself out is to learn how to hold others in your heart as a treasure because we care for that which we treasure. And yeah, you want to treasure yourself, but, but you want to treasure others too. It's easy maybe to treasure a spouse or your kids, but, 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 but even a stranger. As important as this is on an individual level, it becomes even more powerful when a church gets this right as a whole. When a church thinks about not how do we treasure ourselves and, <laughs> and our own body, but how do we treasure those whom we are called to serve? Tom Duncan, who's a former pastor of this church, he, he served this church uh, about 15 years ago. He was saying it in this way, the church is unique as an organization because we exist not primarily for ourselves, but for others. The church isn't called to treasure herself. No, we're called to treasure that which Christ treasures. And Christ treasures those who are far from him 
Christ treasures those who, who are marginalized and who are in need. As a church, we're called, yes, to look outward. We're called together, not to serve ourselves, not to be a club, but, but to serve those who are out there. And our resources, the resources that, that we have that, that are pooled together as a church, the resources of, of our energies and people and our, our resources of finances and our resources of this building and property, all of that, it's not for us. It's for the sake of the world. And the church is called to give herself away just as Christ gave himself away. And... and <laughs> That, that even means sometimes that, that, like Christ, the church is called to give her life away, serve, even at the cost of her own self. <laughs> Are we ready as a church to, to give it all away for the sake of Christ, for the sake of others, if we are led to do so? People in the church rightfully love their church. At Lakeshore Church, we, we love for our members and, and for our leaders to just be passionate about this church, about this ministry. But a person's passion for their church should never eclipse their passion for the kingdom. Our author lifts up a statement that was made by Dallas Willard. He's a well-respected professor and author. And Dallas Willard suggested that, that the most important task of a Christian, especially those who are in church leadership, is this. It's to pray for the success of neighboring churches. Oh, I bet you didn't guess that. Uh, that that's the most important task. But I get it. Churches aren't in competition with one another. Too often, uh, we think we are. We, 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 we think we are, but we're not. I was blown away recently when I asked uh, someone who was visiting our church. I said, hey, what brought you in today? And they, they shared that they were church shopping and that they had been to another church in, in the neighborhood and that the pastor of that church, when hearing what they were looking for, suggested that they come see us. Wow, isn't that the kingdom mindset? When we pray for the success of other churches, that's what puts us in sync with the kingdom of God despite what the values uh, are in the American marketplace, we aren't competing in this, in this Christian marketplace, seeking to win over the most believers to form the best church in town. We're, we're, we're called to serve. We're called to reach out to those who don't believe for the sake of the kingdom, not for our own sake as a church. Yeah, it may sound peculiar to those outside the church, but no, we're not competing with the church next door. Yes, we want the church next door to succeed. Maybe all this is peculiar, but then so too is Jesus who says that the greatest is the one who serves. By faith, we know that Jesus, the Son of God, he is the greatest among us, but by his example, he chose to take that greatness, to surrender it, and to be our servant. He served, not only by washing the feet of the disciples, but yes, by going to the cross, by giving his life. Like him, we too can be great when we treasure others above ourselves and we seek to serve others rather than serving ourselves. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also the interests of others. May we take this treasure and may we own it in our hearts so that we might be called forth to serve those in need. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
now come to that time in our service where we're able to celebrate communion and and we're celebrating this in the sanctuary today during our sanctuary service and we uh, celebrate it here during our pre-recorded as well it it is a spiritual reality that we celebrate uh, one loaf one cup one lord and father of us all as we come together here uh, you you have your elements that you've probably gathered from home maybe a piece of bread and maybe you don't have a fancy uh, pitcher but you have a glass and you can pour your wine your juice into that glass my friends this table signifies our unity how we are one will you pray with me Lord God as we come together to celebrate this meal, we come today at your invitation. Lord, this isn't a Lakeshore church table. This is a kingdom table. And we thank you and we praise you for giving yourself, for offering uh, yourself as a, as a sacrifice so that we can be one with you and each other. Lord, as we celebrate this meal, may it nourish us, may it empower us, to be your servants out in the world. We ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was on the night of our Lord's arrest that he took some bread after breaking it and giving thanks to God. He said to his disciples, take and eat. This is my body given for you. My friends, the body of Christ broken for you. In like manner, after the supper was over, he took the cup and pouring it out, he said, this cup signifies the new covenant shed in my blood. It's shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. My friends, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, let's come together as we pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. It's always great to be able to share a time of communion and remembering the Lord and the sacrifice that was made for our sins. And even though we're not here in person, it's great that we can celebrate communion still together in this way. Well, we heard Pastor Adam speak and we heard the scriptures already this morning about considering others, considering others maybe ahead of our own needs. And uh, what a great passage that is and what a great message that, uh, that we can certainly learn from in the way to build a better community and a loving community. And one of those ways that uh, we can certainly consider others' needs before our own and consider other people more important is a, is a time of prayer and a time of concerns and joys that we do each and every week here at Lakeshore. And uh, this is something that's vitally important to us. And again, if you have any that you want to share with us this morning, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can drop it in the chat. Otherwise, you see the information on the screen. You can text, you can call the church, you can email us, and we will certainly be holding you up in prayer and rejoicing with you this morning and throughout the coming weeks. Just a couple things that we do want to share with you this morning. Uh, last week we mentioned Jim Cherniak who had uh, entered hospice care and actually before it broadcast uh, last Sunday Jim had passed. Uh, Jim is Cheryl Smark's brother and so we do keep uh, his family and Cheryl and Steve and all the rest in our prayers this morning as well. Also for Gail Este, Sue Gedeke's cousin, she is in the hospital with end stage cancer. And so we hold up Sue and her cousin and her family in our prayers as well and ask that God's peace and strength and comfort just be with them all as well. For these concerns and these prayers this morning, we lift them up and say, Lord, hear our prayers. Joys this morning, we have one that we want to share with you. Uh, Kathy Nayart, uh, the friend of Sue Gedeke, is cancer-free after many rounds of radiation. So Kathy, we rejoice with you this morning. We are praising the Lord that you are cancer-free, and we just ask that God will continue to be with you and continue to strengthen you along your journey. For this joy and for all the other ones that you have sent in and the ones that you hold in your heart, we say this morning, thanks be to God. Amen. Always a great time just to come together in prayer and to share with each other. Well, as we've done the last couple of weeks, uh, Pastor Adam has issued a challenge to us uh, at the end of each of his messages, and this is going to continue on throughout this series. And uh, so instead of me this week, we've got Pastor Adam himself. So here's Pastor Adam. Uh, he's going to give us the challenge for this week. And uh, just like uh, weeks in the past, we're going to have a QR code on the screen during the next song. And you can simply uh, take, scan that with your phone and it will take you to the website. You can just fill out the couple things you need to and you'll be all in there and set and confirming that you are going to do this challenge with us. So here's Pastor Adam with our challenge for this week. If you've been following this series, you know each week we're issuing a challenge and our challenge this week is to treasure our treasures. And what this challenge is about is to uh, think intentionally about other people as treasures. When we learn to treasure someone, it becomes easier and, and sometimes even automatic to put that person's needs before your own. This week's challenge is about living unselfishly. As we accept this challenge, we can think about doing this at home, at work or school, at church, and even as we're out and about in the world. So will you accept this challenge? You know, if you do this and you let us know, we will send you uh, an email, just one email tomorrow to offer further encouragement. As we think about treasuring the wider community here as Lakeshore Church, we've decided that uh, October is going to be a month of service and we're putting on a pumpkin patch and hosting one of the most popular trunk and treats that happens in this city. And these things we're doing, it's not for our own benefit. We're putting these on for others. God's called us to serve families. He's called us to treasure them and, and we want to be a blessing to them. We understand that every family in this city, whether they are interested in church life or not, are persons to be treasured. And so we seek to serve. I want to encourage you to get involved in these efforts. Help us out as a church as we serve beyond the walls of this church. And certainly, if you sign up to, to help with any of those two things, you're going to be fulfilling, uh, at least in part, this week's challenge to treasure our treasures.
And people get ready. There's a trainer coming. Don't need no baggage. You just get on board. All you need is faith. You hear those diesels humming. You don't need no ticket, no. You just thank the Lord and yeah. people get ready. There's a train to Jordan, it's picking up passengers from coast to coast. And faith is the key that opens doors to board them. There's hope for all among those who love the most. And air in the world for a hopeless a great old tune from back in the 60s by Curtis Mayfield, uh, People Get Ready. And, and let me tell you, the time is short and uh, it's, it's our responsibility to be out there witnessing and sharing the faith with others because we love them, because we care about other people. Just exactly what we've been talking about today in building a great and beautiful community. Thanks so much for joining with us this week. We're so glad that you've taken some time to tune into this broadcast, to share communion, to share scripture, and share song together. 
We're so grateful and we consider you a part of our church family. Thank you to those who are continuing to faithfully support by plugging in and getting to work at all the stuff that's going on. We've got lots of great things coming up, as Pastor Adam has already shared. Ways for you to plug in, ways for you to get involved in ministry here. Also, thank you to those that are financially continuing to support the work of the ministry and making all of this possible so that we can indeed care about our community even more. If you'd like to join us in that, if you'd like to, uh, to share and to donate to the church, there's information uh, right on the screen in front of you how you can go and donate online at any time at all. You can also stop by the church anytime during the week or during our in-person gathering on Sunday and donate that way. God bless you and thank you for continuing to partner with us in that way. So church, you've heard the challenge. You've heard the challenge once again. And so I leave it with you this morning. This is your calling. This is what God has called us to do in helping to build a great and beautiful community. God bless you. Go out into the world and love on others around you. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.